this week in the COVID inquiry. Yes, it's still going on. We've had explosive evidence, shocking revelations and a bucket load of saucy language. Saucy is putting it mildly, isn't it? But one thing to come from the inquiry, it appears that number 10 was thwart with indecision and chaos. After what we've heard so far, many people say we should have locked down harder. But considering we now know how lockdowns were decided, I want to ask, should we have locked down at all? So joining me now is leader of the Heritage Party, David Curtin, and GB News presenter, Benjamin Butterworth. Gentlemen, thank you very much for, desire, for joining me today, this afternoon. Now, the COVID inquiry... Just checking how much it's actually going to cost us, um, an estimated £410 billion. Pounds. And all I've seen, witnessed so far, is a lot of finger-pointing. Um, David, what do you make of what you've heard coming out of the inquiry so far? I think it's been a farce so far, and a very expensive farce. It's like a whitewash. It's the establishment questioning the establishment about how well they did, and then it, should we have locked down harder, sooner, longer, faster, and all these kind of things. There's no acknowledgement, it seems to me, of how utterly destructive these lockdowns were and how completely unnecessary they were. I mean, I made the point from the very beginning that they were unnecessary. They have affected small and medium-sized businesses, mental health of millions of people. Um, freedoms were destroyed, our fundamental freedoms, and, uh, and, and children's education as well was being wrecked by these lockdowns. Down. So there doesn't seem to have been any acknowledgement of that at all or any comparison to countries like Sweden, which didn't lock down and actually had better outcomes than we did here. David, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, Benjamin, let's come to you now. I mean, you know, lots of mudslinging, lots of name calling, very childish, etc., etc. But the bottom line here is about the lockdowns. David thinks that they've caused more harm than, than they did good. What do you think? I mean, should we have not locked down or... What do you think? Lockdown longer, maybe? I mean, I agree with many of the scientists who are saying at this inquiry and in recent years that we should have locked down earlier. There was one study by Imperial College London that said if we'd locked down two weeks earlier, the 6th of March instead of the 23rd of March, uh, of 2020, we could have saved 20,000 lives from that first most vicious wave when we didn't know how to cope with the symptoms and to help people who were coming down with coronavirus. But look, David mentioned Sweden as his great example of what would happen. Now, for those who don't remember, Sweden didn't lock down. It was pretty unique in that among our part of the world. Well, Sweden had, let me check, 24,000 deaths of its 10 million population. Take Norway, a very similar country, very similarly laid out, similar levels of wealth, very similar healthcare system, similar demographic of population. It had 5,000 deaths from its 5 million people. So it was a 250% higher death rate once you account for the difference in population for Sweden than Norway. That is definitive evidence that if we hadn't locked down, we would have seen tens, if not hundreds of thousands of British people lose their lives, who thankfully did not. David, what would you say to that? No, absolutely. I mean, you're comparing Sweden with Norway, but you're not comparing Sweden with the UK or other countries. I mean, so so um, this simply isn't the case. If we had locked down earlier, um, that wouldn't have made any difference at all to the uh, amount of deaths. There was a spike in deaths, absolutely, in April and May 2020. But then um, it dispersed again, like in the normal curve of uh, any epidemic or, or pandemic that happens. Um, but the fact is that now we know um, many, many, of the deaths that were attributed to COVID over the two or three years were not actually COVID at all. Um, they were other things and they were mostly with people with comorbidities. Even at the time, we knew that people who uh, were apparently, you know, dying with COVID and there was a, an excess mortality, um, the average age of people was 83. And so there were people with who were, who were you know, um, uh, sadly, um, you know, on their way to to dying anyway. So this is simply is not true that if we'd locked down earlier, um, it would have had any impact. Benjamin, that was true, wasn't it? There were people who were being um, chalked up as a, a COVID victim when basically they were dying of cancer and would have died of cancer in any case. I think what David is doing is, is merging two different issues. One, that there were people who, you know, for example, got hit by a bus and then got COVID in hospital. That isn't going to be a COVID death. But when you're trying to say that because people had comorbidities such as 
asthma or skin conditions, things that were classed as comorbidities that made people more vulnerable. The idea that they were somehow on their way out just because of those issues themselves is ridiculous. The evidence that he tries to cite, which was... Uh, some statistics that said something like only a third were really COVID, had people that had a condition such as eczema and said they didn't count because it wasn't only COVID that they had. That is a preposterous way to do the numbers. And then he also seems to echo what we now know Boris Johnson said in private, which was, oh, let the old people die. Well, I tell you what, I think most people who are in their 80s watching this or have parents and grandparents of that age wouldn't be satisfied with saying, oh, I don't care about them. Let's just pop them off in March, April, May 2020. I think that is an inhumane and irresponsible way for a government to behave. And we know from the scientists that if they had locked down two weeks earlier in March 2020, then there could have been 20,000, many of them in that age bracket, who had survived. And that is why lockdown was the right decision and should have been done earlier. David, they were following the science. Lockdowns were important. No, they were following modelling. So there was all kinds of modelling done, particularly that done by Neil Ferguson, which we knew right at the beginning was dodgy modelling. He initially said that if we don't lock down, we're going to have 500,000 people dying from this disease, COVID or SARS-CoV-2, whatever you like to call it. Then on the day that they passed the Coronavirus Act, I think it was the 23rd of March, then he changed his figures from 500,000 to 50,000. And then we found actually one of the figures that that came from the COVID uh, inquiry itself was the actual number of people that actually died from COVID was 177. That was given in the evidence. So there's serious, there really were not that many people who actually died from COVID and SARS-CoV-2 um, solely and exclusively uh, during that time. And the effects that it's had on the economy and on the whole generations, all the generations of people under 60 who were not dying, who were not susceptible, who were not uh, in any danger uh, from whatever was there, um, have had their lives wrecked um, completely unnecessarily due to essentially dodgy modelling rather than empirical observed science. Benjamin, I mean, you know, the mental health consequences alone and repercussions of those will go on probably for generations now. So if, if we learn anything from this COVID inquiry about how we treat a future pandemic, do you think lockdowns will play an important part of any future pandemic? Well, at Touchwood, there won't be a pandemic for another 100 years, as seems to be the usual dispersal of them in human history. But I think the problem is that when people list the consequences, the negative consequences that happened, those are a product of COVID rather than of lockdown. The fact is that it seems to pretend that there was some perfect alternative that would have let all the old people live and all the young people go out and work and party and we couldn't have had to ha deal with COVID as we did. There were people that have had mental health consequences and businesses damaged, damaged, and that is bad. But I still think that is preferable to have having potentially hundreds of thousands of people lose their lives. And that includes, by the way, some of those people that had those negative consequences David described and that I just mentioned. Some of those people wouldn't be alive at all if we hadn't done things like lockdown. And I think that is the reality that you have to take it. To pretend there was a perfect alternative is untruthful and it is misleading people. And it's easy to do years after the incident. But at the time, the vast majority of people were glad to be kept safe and to stay home. Many of them did it voluntarily, even when the rules weren't as strict. David, just one final question very quickly. Um, do you think they'd ever persuade this country to lock down again if there was another pandemic? Absolutely not. I don't think the people of this country are going to have it again. And what they saw was that the people who were in charge of making the decisions weren't scared of the virus themselves because they were partying in 10 Downing Street. So they know they didn't care. They didn't know that they were not afraid of any virus. If they tried to pull this again, the people in this country are not going to have it. We're not going to lock down. Very fair point. Now that's David Curtin, leader of the Heritage Party and Benjamin Butterworth, presenter of the Saturday Five.